Welcome to the Alumni Talk, our Deloitte Switzerland video and podcast series, where we sit down for conversations with former Deloitte colleagues and friends to learn about their inspiring personal journeys and stories. Today, we will be talking about different topics, such as uh, inspiring career moves, transformation, a value of a strong network and advice for your younger self. With us today to share her views and story is Sinja Cristiani. She's Transformation Director for Data and Business Intelligence. A very warm welcome, Sinja, and thank you for joining us. Thank you. So, tell us a bit about your time at Deloitte. Yeah, so I joined Deloitte uh, in the year 2011. Um, as, a, as a senior consultant in the business that was back then called Enterprise Risk Services. Now it uh, was later uh, changed to, to Risk Advisory. So I joined there as a fairly, let's say, junior person with my, my uh, actually my second real job after university. And I joined a team uh, which was basically just founded afresh. I uh, was the second team member to build a data uh, capability within the risk services. Um, I worked um, on various projects, very internationally. The team grew um, quite a bit during these years and with the team I was able to grow as well. It's the beauty of being in a team that grows, right? It gives a lot of opportunity. Um, and I, I mainly worked in the area of, of risk and, and also worked very closely with our forensics colleagues. Um, and um, yeah, at some point was was leading the team together with with one of my colleagues. Um, was very much focused on the the world of of banking. Um, had a few excursions into other industries as well, but, but quite a bit focused on banking. Even though banking was never really what I wanted to do, so um, I came to a point where I said I I would actually like to explore other industries, and I was really interested in. Um, uh, learning about life sciences, uh, just also because I felt that it's an industry with, with more purpose and with more meaning. And, and again, I'm just a curious person, so I wanted to learn something <laughs> new. I, I started that, made a conscious move, but shortly after that, I actually uh, got pregnant. Um, and, and so you can imagine uh, growing into a new industry, knowing that you only have a few months left, it, it's hard, right? And so, so I went on maternity leave, and 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 I, I stayed out for a year. I came back, and and um, was again looking for for a bit of a change. Uh, the, then joined the People and Purpose team, uh, which is the, basically the talent function, and in there again uh, had uh, multiple roles. The last one being uh, the Agile Transformation Coach, uh, leading the team through through their uh, transformation to more agile ways of working before I then left yes. after 11 years. Wow, yes. that's a lot. <laughs> um, so what inspired you to move from more the data and analytics um, focus to more the people and purpose? Um, you already told it a little bit, but what other thought was there behind that move? Yeah, so it's it, it, it's a very it, it's a it's a good question, right? Because I I did study uh, IT and and data. I did data mining as a student, and I always had a from the beginning a passion for for technology. So making a conscious move out of the technology space was not you know was was not an obvious choice, uh, especially as a woman in tech. You're more of a let's say. Um, a unique position that maybe as a woman in HR, right? <laughs> so, but but you know the honest answer is I came back after one year of maternity. Um, my daughter, we didn't have the most easy start, so my daughter had uh, some medical conditions, which back then we weren't sure how they will unfold. And so, for me, that to be honest, the main trigger was, you know, I need an internal role. I can't travel to clients and have this on predictability in this in these early times where I wasn't yet sure how things will will unfold and uh, also you know more medical checkups etc and and at that time the the HR team just announced that they're going through an agile transformation and I was like well that sounds interesting it's you know completely out of what I've been doing before it's internal so giving you a bit more of that flexibility um, 
and I just thought, let's let's have a look, let's let's give it a try. Uh, you know, the the world of agile. So you know, it's I was always interested in that. Um, applying it in a non-technical context is a whole different story, and I li I like challenges, and so. That was, to be honest, the, the real trigger. And then I think it's a, a great example of internal mobility on, on a personal level, what you needed at that time, exactly. and that it was made possible by um, Deloitte to support you in, in that. So I think it's a nice example. Exactly, of that. exactly. And, and it, um, it, uh, it, 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 it has just proven that, that this flexibility is there. And it's also, it was also clear from the beginning, it doesn't have to be a move forever, right? No. Um, there was always a way back to the client-facing role. Um, I think yeah. that's, that was the beauty that also allowed me to, to dare this experience. Yeah, exactly. Um, if we look at your um, career at Deloitte, but again from a, a bigger angle, how would you say um, Deloitte set you up for your um, career, your, what's after Deloitte, right? And, and maybe finding your purpose in what's next or purpose in your life, maybe. Yeah, so maybe first touching on the first question, you know, I think working in a, in a professional services and consulting, you learn to adapt very quickly to also dive into new um, situations, you know, understand the context. So you, you learn to be flexible. Hmm? And, and you learn to be out of your comfort zone quite a few times and, and deal with it without, you know, um, overstressing maybe, you know, accepting that you don't know everything also. And so I think that's a school for life, for whatever follows. Um, I, I think I, that's what I, in my new role, I'm, I'm just there now for half a year in my new um, uh, position. But I think I did benefit from the ability to just quickly grasp the context, quickly understand, you know, what am I looking at here? You know, kind of building the connections with the people. I think that's part of the consulting school, I would say. Yeah. And then the second question um, was the purpose, right? <laughs> yes, exactly. And and I think on that one, the the move to to the talent function. Even though back then it was maybe a bit of an opportunistic move, but it it gave me complete new perspectives. It it also gave me, you know, some of the things where being a a, a manager, a leader in a technical field, you sometimes act differently. You do things differently, and you might sometimes feel a bit being the odd one out or not being heard and maybe not fully understanding it. And being in a in a team which actively works on that topic on you know putting away biases empowering um, more diversity but also pushing then as part of the agile transformation pushing new ways of working which are less driven by power and hierarchy and more by content and knowledge let's say um, some of what i might have felt back then suddenly started to make sense from a theoretical point of view and that's also why I chose to stay partially on that path and work on these topics. And I think I would not have had that aha moment if I hadn't gone into that other role, which just gave me this complete different perspective. Okay. Yeah. Um, and if we go back to where you are now, so we covered your Deloitte part, you're now um, Transformation Director at Zurich Insurance. Based on your expertise, how do you feel um, Deloitte um, acts on transformation um, with its employees as an organization uh, within the marketplace. Uh, yeah, so so that's it's an interesting question, right? As as Deloitte has uh, thought leadership and 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 you know lots of experts in house on you know how the world of work changes, how companies have to change to be successful in the future and um, I think Deloitte is in terms of you know looking now more at Deloitte's internal organization right not how they transform their clients I think um, you're great that at speed you know in terms of agility in you know getting things done and, and implementing really good at speed and also quality 
Uh, I think that's in the nature of the work when you work with clients, that's, you know, what's expected. And, and so that's also a priority in-house. Now, when we think about transforming the, the company um, yourselves, it's sometimes, I, I guess, what I would have loved to see more is the willingness to um, experiment and maybe not always looking for perfect, um, but accepting to, to also learn on the journey. Um, because I think that's that's the, the key to success uh, in, in the new world of much more ambiguity and change. And and I think that has to be the, the next transformational step also for, for Deloitte in terms of culture. Uh, and that's deeply rooted. So that will that will take time. Trial and error and learning from the journey. Yes, correct. Cool. Yeah. Um, maybe a more easy question. For, for a change um, about the um, Deloitte network. So you're a former Deloitte employee. I assume you still have professional and maybe personal contact with former colleagues. How would you say, what is for you a valuable connection uh, within the Deloitte network? Yeah, I, I think, I mean, as I mentioned, I've been um, at Deloitte 11 years, so I've built various connections. Some are friendships which stay uh, for life, I hope. Um, but then from a business context, so for example, when I joined Zurich, uh, one of my former um, colleagues who I actually haven't even worked that closely at Deloitte, but, but he works with Zurich. And so he introduced me to some of my new colleagues at Zurich, which probably through my new role, I would not have met for quite another few months or so. And with that gave me a bit of a kickstart to build my network in the new role, which was really, you know, really appreciated, right? Um, and um, another one is I'm, I'm regularly meeting with former colleagues um, also to exchange on, you know, the, the thinking. As mentioned, you have, you know, you have the experts here, right? And, you know, tapping into that knowledge, kind of widening your horizon again, for me is very valuable um, because if you're, once you're in a, in a corporate, you also, you know, there's this element of being new and, and having this bigger perspective, but that closes over time, right? You're within that company. And so using the network to keep that horizon open for me is invaluable. Yeah. Sounds like a very valuable thing of having a, a network and uh, with former colleagues also. Yeah. Um, maybe a more fun question now so we had an easier question now a more fun question um, would you rather live 100 years in the past or 100 years in the future <laughs> I don't think that's a fun question um, <laughs> because if you think about it 100 years in the past no I think two world wars and yeah I, I would like to you know even though we're also dealing with wars here now, right? But I wouldn't want to go 100 years back. Um, being, uh, you know, enthusiastic about technology and, evolu you know, how everything evolves, the, the answer is obvious. It's 100 years in the future because of my curiosity where we will be. But at the same time, I've been thinking quite a bit about where will be where will we be in 100 years looking at climate change and and all of that and also the social changes and so I'm also not sure I would want to be 100 years in the future even though my curiosity would want that <laughs> so I'm actually I think we're quite privileged uh, yeah. in the the, the the this yeah where we live right now I think it's a bit of a a period of you know, a lot of, you know, things happening, but still a lot of stability, at least yeah. where we are here in Switzerland. And so, yeah, neither nor, I would say. <laughs> <laughs> but a bit curiosity. But, uh, but if I had to pick one, it would be a yeah. hundred years in the future. Yeah. And would that be an advice you give to your younger self? Like stay curious or do you have a specific advice you say? Well, it's, yeah. I guess it's stay curious, but I, given that my younger self was curious, you know, I, I personally wouldn't have needed that <laughs> advice. Um, I think the, the other big advice I keep giving to younger talents and also female talents now is stay true to yourself. Don't try to fit in. Um, and of course, be smart, right? Uh, sometimes you have to, yeah, but, but 
But be yourself, stand in for your values, because that's how we can also drive change for the better. And if we just meld in with what everyone expects, then nothing will change. And you don't want to be in a place in 40 years where you, 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 know, you missed the opportunity to have an impact. So that's, looking back, I could have done even more of that, oh, probably. Okay. Yeah. I think that's some inspirational advice we can all use. I hope. So it's a good way to, to end our, our very interesting um, conversation. So thank you so much for your time and for uh, letting uh, us pick your brain. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for joining us for this inspirational conversation. Hope you enjoyed it and stay tuned for our future alumni talks with many more interesting guests.